Hi, today we're going to have a look at the 2012 Leaving Cert Higher Level Question 1. This is a company account question. As with all question 1s, we're given a trial balance, we are given some notes, and we are asked to prepare a trading profit and loss account and balance sheet. So first of all, we are going to have a look at the notes. The first note says that closing stock at the year end was 81200 that includes damaged stock of 5,400, which now has a net realizable value of 2,300. So for note one, closing stock was 81,200. We're going to take away the cost of the damaged goods, which is 5,400, and we're going to add the net realizable value of 2,300. And that leaves us with closing stock of 78,100. And as there's no more changes to closing stock, that will go and cost the sales in the P&L and is also a current asset in the balance sheet. No. 2 says patents which incorporate three months investment income are to be written off over four years commencing in 2011. So included in patents are three months investment income. Now if we go up to our investments we can see that we had the investments for the whole year. So I need to work out three months which were included in patents and take them out of patents. And I also may as well do the rest of the investment income note because the nine months will be due to us. Uh, so I need to work that out as well. So my next note is going to be on investments. So the investments did not change during the year. So there were 300,000 for the whole year. So 4%, we get 4% of that. And then for three months, multiply by three over 12. And that's the amount that was incorrect included in patents. And we'll also work out the investment income for the rest of the year, which is 300,000 by 4% by 9 over 12, because we'll need that for the balance sheet, which is 9,000. And that leaves the total investment income for the year of 12,000. And that will be added on at the bottom of the P&L. Now, the patents from the trial balance, if we look back at the trial balance, we can see the patents in the trial balance are 20,400. and But that includes includes three months investment incomes. Patents are a debit balance, investment income will be a credit balance. So if we take out the investment income, our patents are going to go up. So we're gonna add on the 3,000 here that were incorrectly included in patents. And that will give us a patents figure of 23,400. Now patents are to be written off over four years. So 23,400 divided by four, will leave us with 5,850. And pay that patent's written off is an admin expense in the PL. Now for the balance sheet, the correct uh, figure for patents is 23,400. Then if we take away the amount written off, that is going to leave us with patents of 17,550, which is an intangible asset in the balance sheet. Furno 3 is in relation to suspense. So again, there's two parts to this, usually separated by the and. The first part uh, says the suspense figure arises as a result of an incorrect figure for the venture interest. So if we go up to our venture interest figure here in the trial balance, we can see that the ventures for the first four months, 5,600. That figure is incorrect. We need to work out the correct figure for the four months. Again, we can see our debentures figure here. We had them for a full year. There's no date after, which means we had them for 12 months. And again, we may as well work out the uh, other eight months because that will be a liability in the balance sheet. So for the benchers, we're going to split them up into four months and eight months. So that's the first note I'm going to do here is the debentures. And again, the debentures did not change during the year. There were 180,000. So for the first four months, it's going to be 180,000 by 9% by 4 over 12. And for the next eight months, it's going to be 180,000 by 9% by 8 over 12, which gives me total investments, sorry, the venture interest for the year of 16,200. Now that 16,200 will be taken away at the bottom of the P&L. The debenture interest that's still due to 10,800 will be a liability less than one year in the balance sheet. And it's this uh, 5,400, which is the correct figure. So that's the figure we're going to use for our suspense. 
Now, the debenture interest from the trial balance was 5,600. We now know that that figure should be 5,400. So let's get it to 5,400. I need to credit it with 200. And it's going to go in the opposite side of suspense, which in this question is included in salaries and general expenses. So from the trial balance, salaries and general expenses is 194,300. And this 200 euro just goes on the opposite side from the debenture interest account. So it'd be a debit balance here in the salaries and general expenses. So just uh, to show what was going on here, the mortgage interest above should be 5,400. In the trial balance is 5,600. So the difference is going to be 200. And we just do the T accounts to see whether we add or take away the 200 to the salaries and general expenses, which includes suspense. If the 200 euro was on this side, if it should have been, let's say 5,800, I would have put the 200 here and it would have went on this side of the suspense account. Now the salaries and general expenses, so from the trial balance, it's 194,300. And as this 200 euro is the same side, we are going to add the 200 euro. That's the first part of the suspense note done. The second part of the suspense note is in relation to there was a discount allowed of 450 entered only in the discount account so to do this i would set up t accounts and um, the two accounts required here a discount allowed and we need to know that you allow a discount to debtors who are people that owe us money so the two accounts that should have been affected were discount allowed and debtors now the debtors uh is 94,800. that figure is coming from the trial balance and again in red here uh, the discount was 10,400 coming from the trial balance. So these two figures are just uh, what the balances in the trial balance were. What I've done here in gray is I've, shade, I've shaded where the figures should go. So if it's a discount allowed, it's an expense, it's gonna be bad for us, so it'll be a debit balance. And if we allow a discount to debtors, here it's going to reduce how much the debtor owes us. So in gray is what should have happened. Now if I go back to the question, it says that the discount allowed 450 was entered only in the discount account. So it was entered in the discount account, that's fine. It wasn't entered in debtors, so we need to put it into debtors. And again, it's just going to go in the opposite side of suspense. So here, uh, this discount error is going to be added on because it's the same side as the 194300, which will leave me with salaries and general expenses, including suspense of 194950. I don't need to do anything with discount as it was entered correctly in discount. And for the debtors, I'm going to have to reduce debtors by 450. So per the trial balance, debtors are 98,400. And I'm going to have to reduce that by 450 euro. As a 450 euro entry is on the opposite side. So debtors are now 97,950. And I'm not writing where they go yet, as there's going to be another adjustment to debtors later on. Note four is about stock which was destroyed by a fire. The insurance, so that was five grand. The insurance company are going to pay us four grand um, and the loss is uh, a separate item in the PL. So obviously we're going to lose out on a grand. If there's damage was 5,000, insurance company's giving us 4,000, it's going to be a loss of 1,000. So it's important here that the 5,000 is taken away from purchases. Some people might think it's taken away from closing stock, but the damaged stock is taken away from purchases. So purchases for the trial balance is 1,140,000. And I'm gonna take away the cost of the damaged stock of 5,000. So that's going to leave me with 1135000. And again, there must be another change to purchases later, so I won't write where it goes in the accounts yet. The damage stock, to work out the loss and damage stock, well, the stock costs 5,000. The insurance company is giving us 4,000. So there's going to be a loss of 1,000 euro. And that 1,000 euro is going to be an admin expense in the P&L. And the insurance company owes us 4,000. So they are going to go in the balance sheet under current assets as an insurance company debtor, not to be included with trade debtors, which are debtors in the normal course of business. This is a separate item, so it'll go on a line of its own under current assets insurance company debtor. 
Note 5 is, again, a standard note. It comes up a lot. It's where we buy a van and sell a van. To do this note, there are six headings or six different figures we need to change. The first two are in relation to the old van. We need to work out the, the depreciation for the old van, and the reason we do that is to see whether we made a profit or loss in the old van. First of all, we have to see how long we had the old van for. So we got it on the 30, it's up to 6, 2005, and sold it on the 31st of the 3rd, 2011. So we had it for all of 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is five years. We had it for six months in the year we purchased it and three months in the year we sold it. So in total, we had it for five years and nine months. And the cost of the van we're selling was 28,000. So to work out the depreciation on the old van, if it cost 28,000, and the rate of depreciation is 10%. We work out 10% of that. That's for a year. And then for five years, multiply that by five, which is 14,000. Now, if it's 2,800 for a year, for 12 months, it's going to be 2,800 divided by 12, multiplied by nine for the nine months, which in total gives us depreciation of the old van of 16,100. Now we need to see whether we made a profit or loss in the old van. So we can see here from above the old van cost 28,000. The depreciation we're after working out to be 16,100, which will leave us with a net book value of 11,900. So we, according to us, it was worth 11,900. In the question, it says we received an allowance of 6,000. So we only got 6,000 off the new van. So we thought it was worth 11,900. We only received an allowance of 6,000. So we have a loss on the sale of the van of 5,900. And that loss is going to be included as a selling and distribution expense in the P&L. The third note we need to do here under this part, under part five, is the cost of delivery vans. So first of all, if we go back to the question, we can see that the cost of delivery vans in the tri are 260,000. I'm going to take away the cost of the van that we sold, which is 28,000. And I'm going to add the cost of the new van, which is 54,000. So in total, that will give me cost of delivery vans of 286,000. And that will be included uh, under cost in the fixed asset note in the balance sheet. The fourth and fifth notes we need to do in note five are depreciation notes. The first one is the depreciation for the year. And the second one is the accumulated depreciation. So from the question, we can see that in the current year, 2011, the, we bought and sold the van three months into the year. So for the first three months, the cost is going to be the same as the trial balance. And then we bought a van and sold the van. And for the next nine months, the cost has changed to 286,000. So for the first three months, it's going to be 260,000 by 10% by three over 12. And for the next nine months, it's going to be 286,000 by 10% by nine over 12. So in total, the depreciation of delivery vans for the year is 27,950. Accumulated depreciation. So from the trial balance, we can see the cost of vans are 260 and they're now worth 180. So up to the start of the year, they must have been depreciated by the difference of those which is 80,000, so 260,000 minus 180,000, it's 80,000. I need to add the depreciation for this year because that's not included in that figure, but I also need to remember to take out the depreciation of the van we sold as we do not have that van anymore. So depreciation of van 16,100 needs to be taken out, which will leave us with accumulated depreciation of delivery vans of 91,850. And again, that is going to go in the fixed asset note in the balance sheet. And the last thing we need to do here, it says in the question, the net amount of this transaction was incorrectly included as a purchase of trading stock. And it's not a purchase of trading stock in the normal course of business. It's a fixed asset. So it needs to be taken out of purchases. So the new van cost 54. We got an allowance of six, which means we paid 48. And that's the figure that was incorrectly included in purchasing. It needs to come out. Now, again, we just need to make sure we're working on our most up-to-date purchases figure, which comes from Note 4. So purchases from Note 4, 
is 1,135,000 and I need to take out net amount of 48,000. And that will leave me with purchases of 1,087,000 and that will go in cost of sales in the P&L. Note six is the bank reconciliation note. So it says the figure for the uh, trial balance has been taken from the firm's bank account. So if we go up to the trial balance, we can see here the bank is 33,000 of an overdraft as it's a credit balance. <clears throat> then we received a statement saying the bank overdraft is 31,280 and we need to reconcile these. Usually here with this question, the first two uh, notes will affect our bank figure. And the third one will not affect ours as it's a check that we wrote and we know about it, it just hasn't hit the bank yet so that will uh, affect the bank statement the first part of this question says there's a check for 640 issued to a supplier or a creditor and this has been entered in the books as 460 so it was understated by the difference which is 180 euro so to have a look at this probably the easiest way to have a look at this is to do up little t accounts so the two accounts that are affected are creditors and bank. So the creditors figure from the trial balance um, is 82,200 and bank from the trial balance is also a credit balance of 33,000. Now, um, when we pay a creditor, what should have happened is we should debit creditors as it will reduce how much we owe them and we should credit bank because with bank, you debit what comes in and credit what goes out. So if we uh, pay a creditor, it'll be money coming out of our bank. So in grey here is what should have happened. Now, we understated that. We should have put it in for 640. We only put it in for 460. So the extra 180 has to go in. So we're going to uh, debit creditors with 180 and credit bank with 180. So for the notes then, uh, per the trial balance, creditors are 82,200. And I'm going to minus 180 as the entry is on the opposite side, which will leave me with 82,020. Um, the next note I'm going to do is the bank note. So the bank overdraft per the trial balance is 33,000. And as the 180 is a credit entry, it's going to increase my bank overdraft by 180 which will now leave us with an overdraft of 33,180. So that is the first part of the bank reconciliation not done. The second part uh, is in relation to a credit transfer of 900 that was paid directly into our bank account on behalf of a debtor who has uh, recently been declared bankrupt. This represents a first and final payment of 30 cent in the euro or 30% of the amount of money that they owed us in total. So to have a look at this, what we received was 900 euro and that represents 30% of the total debt. So the total amount would be 900 divided by 30 multiplied by 100. The total debt was 3000. So what they still owe us would be the difference is 2100. Now the, two the 900 that we received is going to reduce our bank overdraft because it's an overdraft and if we receive money it will reduce the overdraft so that's going to go down by 900 which will leave us with a bank figure of 32,280. The debtors is going to be reduced by the full amount now again I just have to use my most up-to-date debtors figure which is coming from note 3 don't take the trial balance figure always use the most up-to-date figure so the debtors figure if I go back to note 3 my debtors are 97,950. And I'm going to take away the total bad debt because I've uh, received 900, they don't owe us that anymore. They're not giving us the other 2,100. So in total debtors, are going to go down by 3,000. So debtors are now 94,950. And the bad debt written off is the amount that we did not receive, which we were still owed and we're not getting is 2,100. And that bad debt written off is to be included as a selling and distribution expense in the PL. So that's where the 2100 goes. The last entry in the bank reconciliation was a check for fees of a thousand issued to a director has not been presented for payment. So this will not affect our bank figure as we have accounted for this 1000. It just hasn't hit the statement yet. 
But just to finish our bank reconciliation, if we take the figure from the statement, which is the bank statement says there's an overdraft of 31,280. But they have not accounted for this check of a thousand which we written, and that will increase our overdraft. So we're going to add that one thousand, which will leave us with thirty two thousand two hundred and eighty. And you can see here from the yellow, our bank is now reconciled, and we're happy that that's the correct figure for bank. Note eight or seven is in relation to an advertising payment uh, is for an eighteen month campaign which began on the first of the tenth two thousand eleven. So as we're doing the accounts for 2011, three of the months are for this year and the other 15 months are for next year and the following year, which are prepaid. So of the 18 months, three are for this year and 15 are prepaid. So to have a look at the advertising, per the trial balance, advertising is 4,800. If we take away the prepaid amount, which is the 15 months, so be 4,800, divided by 18, multiplied by 15, and we're going to subtract those, which is 4,000, that will leave us with advertising for this year of 800. And that advertising is a selling and distribution expense in the P&L, and the advertising that we've prepaid, this 4,000 will be a current asset in the balance sheet. Note eight, says the directors recommend provision be made for investment income due and the venture interest due. Well, the good news is we've done these two already because in note two, um, in the patents note, we've worked out the investment income due already. And in the suspense note, note three, we've worked out the venture interest due. So both of those are done already. So we don't need to do them again. Uh, the second part says provision for bad debts to be adjusted to 4% of debtors. So we need to work out the bad debt provision, which is the 4% of debtors. Now, we just need to be careful when working out the bad debt provision that, again, we take uh, the most up-to-date debtors figure, not the trial balance figure. So the most up-to-date or current debtors figure is 94950 The provision is 4%. So the bad debt provision should be 3,798. Per the trial balance, the bad debt provision is 3,000. So it is going to be an increase in the bad debt provision of 798. Now an increase in the bad debt provision is bad. So that's going to be a selling and distribution expense in the P&L. If it was a reduction in the bad debt provision, it would be good and it will go under operating income. But this is an expense because it is an increase in a bad debt provision. And the last note we have to do are depreciate buildings at 2%. So there was no change to uh, buildings in the question. So we're just going to take the cost of buildings from the trial balance, which is 800,000. And the depreciation rate is 2%. So that will leave us with depreciation of buildings of 16,000. And that is an admin expense in the PL. So now that our notes are complete, we will have a look at the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. So to start off with the profit and loss account, the first thing we're going to have are sales. And our sales have not changed uh, throughout the notes. So we're going to take the sales from the, from the trial balance, which is 1,444,700. Our he next heading is less cost of sales. So the first thing here will always be opening stock. And again, that will always be from the trial balance. That should never change. Then we're going to add our purchases and we've had a few changes to purchases. So I'm going to take my last purchases figure here, my most up to date one, which is 1,087,000. So I'm going to have opening stock plus purchases leave me with 115,200. And then I'm going to take away my closing stock, which I changed in note one to the accounts. Closing stock, 78,100. So that will leave me with a cost of sales. When I take away the closing stock, it leaves me with a cost of sales of 1,080,100. And my sales, less my cost of sales, give me a gross profit of 364,600. Now I have to add any operating income that I have. And the only operating income I have is a discount. And I know it's an income because if I go back to my trial balance, it's on the credit side here. Uh, 
The discount could also, if it was a debit balance, it would be a selling and distribution expense. So you just have to be careful with that. But in this question, it's a credit balance, so it's income. So I'm going to add 10,400, which leaves me with 375,000. Now for the expenses. First of all, I'm going to do my administration expenses. So for my first admin expense is patents written off. And I have a note done on patents, um, which is the investment income note two here. So patents written off are 5,850. Salaries and general expenses. Again, I have a note done on that in my suspense here. So that comes to 194,950. Director's fees are just directly from the trial balance. There's no change to director's fees of 40,200. And the last one is my last admin expense is depreciation of buildings, which I just worked out to be 16,000. So my total admin expenses come to 257,000. My selling and distribution expense, my first uh, selling and distribution expense is bad debts and we'll call that written off. And the bad debts written off is the 2,100 which we did not receive. So if I go back here, I can see 2,100 which I did not receive is the bad debt written off. Depreciation of delivery vans, I have worked out in the note where I bought and sold the van. So depreciation of delivery vans for the year are 27,950. The increase in the bad debt provision, I worked out towards the end. So the in, it's just the increase goes here of 798,000. The loss in the sale of van, again, I have worked out in the long note on buying and selling vans. So the loss in the sale of van is 5,900, which is also a selling and distribution expense. The loss on the insured stock, which is the damage of 5,000, I received 4,000, so I have a loss in damage stock of 1,000. And the advertising, this year's advertising figure goes into the P&L. So the three months of the advertising here, the 800, is a selling and distribution expense. So in total, my selling and distribution expenses come to 38,548. So if I add my admin expenses and my selling and distribution expenses, it comes to 295,548. So if I get my profit of 375 minus my total expenses, leaves me with 79,452. To that, I'm going to add my investment income. Now, that's the total investment income for the year. So if I go back to my note on investment income, I can see that the total investment income is 12,000. That's going to be added on because it's going to increase my profit. Uh, next of all, I'm going to take away my debenture interest. So if I go to my note on debentures, the debenture interest for the year is 16,200. That needs to be taken away because it's going to reduce my profit, which leaves me with 75,252. I'm also going to have to take away my dividends, which I would just get from the trial balance. So the dividends paid are 23,300, which will leave me with a retained profit of 51,952. Now my profit coming forward, if I go back to the question, and look at my profit and loss balance at the start of the year, it was 25,100. But is it a debit balance, which means it's a loss coming forward. If it was a credit balance, it would be a profit coming forward and it would be a plus figure. But as it's a loss, it's going to be a minus 25,100. So that's minus 25,100. So that leaves me with a profit and loss balance at the end of the year of 26,852, and that's the P&L complete. With the balance sheet, the first figure in my balance sheet is going to be the intangible fixed assets or patents. So if I go back to my note on patents, I can see that after I took away the patents written off, my patents figure here is 17,550. 
For my tangible fixed assets, buildings, the cost of buildings I get from the trial balance are 800,000. There's no accumulated depreciation of buildings uh, in the trial balance, so the uh, depreciation coming forward is going to be zero. So I just need to put in this year's depreciation of buildings, which I worked out at the bottom of my notes, to be 16,000. The cost of delivery vans I worked out in the long note where we bought and sold the van. So the cost of delivery vans from that note were 286,000. From the same note, I worked out the accumulated depreciation of delivery vans. So if I go down here, the accumulated depreciation of delivery vans were 91,850. So if I subtract those, I get 194,150 as my net book value. So now I'm just going to add these down. So my total net book value for tangible fixed assets are 978,150. Financial fixed assets. The only financial fixed asset I have is the investment and that is 300,000 and it has not changed during the year. So I'm going to get that from the trial balance. So my total fixed assets if I add my intangibles, my tangibles, and my financials, I get total fixed assets of 1,295,700. Current assets. So in current assets, the first thing that's going to go here is closing stock. So again, closing stock is coming from note 1, 78,100. The insurance company debtor I will get from my notes here is the 4,000 that they still owe us. So that 4,000 is the insurance company debtor. So you can see there, that's still owed to us. My debtors, my normal trade debtors, I can have to go down here and make sure I get the most up-to-date figure for my trade debtors, which were 94,950. And I'm going to take away the bad debt provision. And that's the full amount of the debt provision, not just the increase. The full amount of the bad debt provision has to be taken away, which is what it should be, 3,798. So my debtor's less provision are 91,152. The advertising prepaid, now not this year, it's the three months, the prepaid, the 15 months will go as a current asset in the balance sheet. Um, the 4,000 as a current asset and the investment income that we're still due is good so that's going to be an asset. So if we go back up to my investment income note this amount here, the nine months that are still due is an asset so that will go there. So in total my current assets come to 186,252. My creditors, amounts falling due within one year. The first figure that will go here are creditors. And there was a change to creditors, so I need to get my most up-to-date creditors figure. Which is 82,020. My bank overdraft, I will get from the bank reconciliation note here, which is 32,280. And my debenture interest due, I will get from my debenture interest note, which is note three. And it's the due part, we still have to pay 10,800, so that's a liability, so that will go there. So my total credit is due within one year, come to 125,100. So that will leave me with a working capital. Right, and I get my current assets and take away the liabilities of 61,152. And if I add that to my total fixed assets above, we're leaving with total net assets of 1,356,852. For the final part of the balance sheet, we're going to start off with finance buy. These are creditors due greater than one year, which is my debenture loan. And that's coming from the trial balance, 180,000. My capital reserves, my authorized share capital, I will get up here from the very top of the question. So the authorized share capital of ordinary shares is 1.1 million. Of preference shares, the authorized share capital is 500,000. 
and that leaves me total authorised of 1.6 million. The issued share capital I will get from the trial balance itself. So the issued ordinary shares are 700,000. The issued preference shares 400,000. That leaves me with 1.1 million. Now to that, I need to add my capital reserves, which is just a very final figure in the P and F, sorry, in the trial balance, and there's been no change to that throughout the year. So that 50,000 is coming from the trial balance. And I also need to put in my retained profit and loss balance at the end of the year, which is my final figure from the P&L, of 26,852. So when I add these three figures, I get 1,176,852, and that added to my creditors due greater than one year, leave me with a capital employed of 1,356,852. And we can see now here that our balance sheet is balanced. So hopefully this video was useful for you. If it was, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and I'll try to do more videos soon. Thank you.